What's up, everybody? Andrew Mahone here with Tricky Jim. Going to be playing a game on PTCGO today, and today I am rocking Sander Washick's seventh place deck from the Offenbach Regional Championship. Let's take a look at this list real quick before we hit, go ahead and get started, just because it is such an insane deck. If we take a look at this, it really looks pretty wild. We've got things such as one copy of Acro Bike in here for, I don't actually know the reason, so maybe Sander could uh, enlighten us, but we do have some crazy stuff. We've got a couple copies of Frying Pan, one Bodybuilding, Dumbbells, uh, one Counter Energy, one Rainbow Energy, for Steven's Resolve, which you can see I could not for the life of me find matching artworks on those. Got three copies of Lucimine, one Looker, just in case you want to uh, draw off the bottom of your deck. Two copies of Shrine, and then a whole crazy cast of Pokemon as well. We only play two Crushing Hammers. Most of our hammers are Enhanced Hammers. Two copies of Counter Catcher. Uh, lots of Max Potion. You won't be using Energy for the most part, but we do have the option to just in case we want to resource management or maybe go in with a Cold Crush GX. Discard all energy from both active Pokemon if you want to just totally uh, eliminate or nuke one of your opponent's active Pokemon's uh, energy counts. You could just do that. Maybe Acerola into Articuno and just, you know, crushing Cold GX them. Pretty cool stuff. Uh, Brooklyn Hill works to get Onyx and Whalmer into play. Also can get your Articuno, so that's pretty dope. But this is a wild list. I am a little bit concerned that I might not be piloting it perfectly during these games that I'm about to roll. But you never know. We're going to go check it out. I This is totally fresh to me. Just got off work from teaching. I've got a few weeks left of that before we are transitioning into this full time. So uh, we are still getting everything worked out. Hopefully the audio is a little bit better for you all today. We've been working out some kinks with that as well. Figured out how to get the furnace to uh, chill out while I record, so that's good. Uh, I've got some soundproofing panels that I'm getting, but we may also be looking into getting a whole separate studio space here in the near future. I've got a crane arm ordered as well that is going to be able to clamp on on the side of my desk here and we're going to be getting back to some tabletop games i know a lot of people were asking about those i'm excited to get tabletop games back into the mix so i hope you guys are stoked about that as well looks like we've got a couple copies of onyx here and we've got the classic stall deck Go in with the Gladian turn one. So we're going to be checking out our prizes, see if we've got anything useful in there. Now, the idea of this deck, ooh, we also have fan club. I think I like fan club a little bit. We can screech. That doesn't really do anything. I think we just save our energy for, like, absolutely anything other than this. Now, I don't know what in the world I'm playing against, but I feel like we should be relatively favored against most other decks. Uh, I feel like we really just don't even want to do anything. Let's just Gladian until I figure out what my opponent is doing. I don't really think that I want, you know, too much other stuff. So let's just go get a Cynthia here. I could grab a Steelix, but I think I just want to kind of have more cards that are not these cards. So I think I'm just going to go get a Cynthia turn one and then just pass it off to my opponent. That's fine. Go ahead. Have some fun. See what you got going on here. Now I expect since this is what Tapu Coco here, my opponent's probably playing things like DZ, but they've also got this like lightning deck box. So really I have no idea uh, what they are playing. They just got flying flip. That's what they got. That's it. So cool. That's fine. I've got a copy of Ace Rolla, but I feel like I just... Cynthia, Frying Pan would be incredible there on the active. Would be really good if I could get myself maybe a Steelix for next turn. Uh, so let's see. Let's uh, let's just go ahead and Cynthia, see what we get. And uh, like I said, no idea what's going on here. So we do have a uh, Enhanced Hammer. I think we just throw that like for sure. I feel like there's absolutely no reason not to do that. And then since my opponent is flying flipping, I think I'm going to be a little bit conservative with just putting bench Pokemon down. I feel like I'd rather just have my Onyxes out there doing their thing and maybe just focus on healing them first instead of just benching like a bunch of different Pokemon. Then I got to worry about if my opponent's playing like a Coco spread Tapu Lele counter deck. The cool thing about counter decks is that I will literally 
never play a, uh, you know, I'll never take a prize. So counterattacks, the counter energies just don't work at all here. So is this is this what turns into with this deck? Are we just like, are we just sitting here passing until I think I just Steven's Resolve uh, go for maybe a couple copies of Steelix. We'll get like a Steelix or two. Uh, and then we'll probably also get like another Enhanced Hammer. And we'll just, yeah, that seems fine. And then I just uh, kind of rock and roll from here. I've got a Cynthia. Steven's Resolve is apparently like the whole engine of this deck. And instead of having Sylveon, no, not a judge. Instead of having Sylveon, we have Steven's Resolve, right? That's kind of like a similar stall deck thing that we got going on. We could hand select cards out of our deck with the Stevens. I think that we're just in like, are they going to try to deck me out? I play a Rangaroo, so I think that if they try to deck me out, I just win, right? So do we just like pass back and forth? I feel like I don't really need to do anything until my opponent does something. I think like that's what we're on right here. I think we're just on, <laughs> like they're just... This could be the the longest video that I film, actually. And this is why I just, I cannot play a stall deck at a regional. I just think that this is, this is too much. Like, how am I supposed to win a game if I can't take a prize? I guess, like, we just will sit here forever. I can never rage. They have not taken any sort of prizes. So we're just sitting here, and we're going to pass all 39 cards out. Uh, we don't even play any sort of like rockets handiwork that's one of the craziest things i think about this format and it's one of the craziest things i think about these decks is that there is just no oh they've attached something i think i'll remove it right like that's just how that goes cool and then i think i probably i don't know is there any point like my opponent's not going to do anything so i think i just remove the energy and then go from there um i guess i feel like okay they are gonna start aggressing i think they probably realize that they can't just do this forever so let's um i didn't play the stevens resolve last turn because i just didn't want to i wanted to uh i don't know if my opponent's gonna try to deck me out and i'm a little sketched out about the idea of them decking me out right i feel like i probably just try to ace a into an orangaroo and just start shuffling cards back into my deck at a certain point and then we just like win, right? So like that's probably eventually what we're headed towards. Let's just Stevens now, and I'll get myself a Steelix and an Orangaroo, and I already have Acerola in my hand, and I guess I have the Counter Energy. I'll get a I'll get another Frying Pan. This is annoying, actually. I want actually both Steelixes. Man, I want both Steelixes. That's fine. We'll just get these. I already have a max potion in my hand if I need it. But uh, let's see. I don't know why I got the second frying pan. I think the second frying pan is like worse than if I would have gotten the, uh, you know, worse than if I would have gotten the, it's all, it's all good. I mean, honestly, I don't think that my opponent's going anywhere fast. In fact, I don't know if you could see this. I have so many cards in my hand. It's starting to like glitch out down there. So like my game is very unhappy that I am playing a stall deck. As you can tell, the world is unhappy that I'm playing a stall deck. Let's try to crushing hammer this. We'll see how that goes. Yep, we got there. So at this point, we probably, uh, I don't think that I'm going to put my Oranguru up yet. I feel like we just wait like even longer for that. So let's just like evolve the active. And that way my opponent's really doing nothing. And then we just, uh, yeah, we just pass and we keep waiting for the right time to eventually Acerola into Oranguru. And this is, this is just the grind that we are on. We have just, we got the loop set up, like we're cool. And this is the life of a stall deck. It's just that like, you play against other shrine decks, I'm pretty sure that this Steelix deck just has a fantastic shrine matchup. I think that there are most shrine decks are probably not going to be able to beat you. I think Malamar based shrine decks can probably beat you though. I think that that just, that seems like a bad matchup. I feel like so long as they can get, I uh, guess, some sort of attacker going. I mean, you don't have infinite healing options. You do have a lot. I guess, like, with Lusamine, if your opponent, so long as they're not putting, like, super quick pressure on you with Lusamine, you do have, like, what seems like intimate healing options. Or not intimate, infinite. 
infinite healing options. Infinite feeling options. So yeah, that uh that's just that's just what we got going on. And I feel like, yeah, there's like nothing I'm missing, right? Like I think I eventually try to get a the Team Rockets handiwork into my hand. Not the not the handiwork. I need like the Team Skull Grunt. I need to get that into my hand here eventually so that I can I don't need to Lucamine yet. So that I can, let's see, we could get a Stevens Resolve. That's actually kind of cool. I need a Lusamine for a Stevens Resolve. I feel like we might as well do that. Let's Lusamine. And let's get like Stevens Resolve and Stevens Resolve back into my hand. I think that like feels kind of cool. And I feel like, you know, with the Rangaroo, I just have an infinite loop. Like I can just make, I, I can last forever. So, so long as my opponent can't also do the same thing, then I can't lose, right? That kind of kind of seems like what we got going on here. So I think I need to try to, let's try to get my opponent to just like quit. We should just go get like Steven's Resolve and see if I can get my, is my dude in here? Where's the, where is he? Team Skull Grunt. Sure. Yeah, let's try to remove some more stuff from my opponent. We could do Team Skull Grunt is good. We can get another Ace Arola is fine. I don't think that I'll need any of this, but I don't know. We're just going to go get it. Oh, I wanted actually another Steelix. Sure, that's fine. Okay. Now we've got more Steelixes. Turn ends. And the real question is, can Andrew talk about a game where he does nothing for probably like 30 minutes. Can he talk the whole time? <laughs> uh, that is that is the question. So now my friend, I can't even like see the cards that are in my hand anymore. They are all so small and like covered up. Like I'm sure that the, can the game even handle like a 60 card hand? I don't know, I've never been there. So like I'm figuring that out with you guys. Let's see my discard pile, it's got some stuff in it. I think I just go for the, uh, where is the Team Skull Grunt? Sure, let's do that. And we're gonna go, there are no valid cards to select. My opponent has got no energy in their hand. Oh my gosh, what in the world are they playing? How do they have a hand this big with no energy in it? That's fine. I'm not super concerned about it. I do get to take a nice little look at their deck. They were not gonna be able to do anything to me. So we are just like past city over here. Um, shrines, they've got copycats. Okay, Cynthia's, we're just, we just passing. I think, I feel like our deck needs a way to aggress or something and just make them draw more cards. I think like, do they just quit if I just bring up a Rangaroo and start to resource management things back and I'll just, I'm gonna do that like later. I'm just gonna pass for a while. I don't want to burn any cards. We're just chilling here, passing. Steelix has 40 damage on it. This is this is insane. I can't even imagine what it would be like at a like regional or national championships and you're like trying to commentate on this. And they've talked about they've talked about like uh, you know, if two say two Steelix decks got paired against each other in the finals of a big tournament, like what happens, right? Because both decks can just infinitely loop forever, right? With Lusamine combos. So that's like a big thing. Like what happens when both decks can just infinitely loop forever? How do you how do you solve the game? How does how do you determine a winner? I actually have no idea. And apparently you would like, you know, they I don't think that anybody really knows. Because eventually you're gonna go to time, right? and no one will have taken a prize. So then it's gonna go to next prize wins, and if no deck can take a prize, then you just lose. So I think what needs to happen is that all of these Steelix decks just need to play a copy of Kartana, right? Like I think that's just a thing that we're going to need to see. Because if you play Kartana, then you can, you know, it's like it goes to time, and then at least like next prize wins, you just, put the Kartana down, GX, and it's game over, you win. So I think, you know, we're already playing Rainbow Energy. I think that that's probably, uh, probably the next step. It's actually getting very annoying here. I cannot see my hand at all. So I think I'm gonna put that frying pan 
if I can find, yeah, we're gonna put that over there because I don't want him doing damage to me anymore. And then I feel like I should remove that energy because that's kind of annoying as well. So we need to find a Plumeria. And this is not a struggle that I thought I would have ever, that I like wouldn't be able to find the cards in my hand. There's Plumeria. I feel like we just Plumeria to discard that. Um, yeah, come on. Give me that that card right, right there. Yep. And we're going to discard like probably a Whalmer and a Whale Lord. I don't really need those probably. So let's just get rid of those and then, uh, sure, go ahead, sir or ma'am or uh, Mr. Mrs. or Mr. Trace 0102. So let's, uh, yeah, here we are. Same old stuff. This this would just be mind-numbing to play at a regional championship. I can't imagine, though I, I will admit that you probably have some fantastic matchups because, uh, you know, decks without a Rangru and stuff. You don't, Rangru doesn't even necessarily beat you because you just play more removal options than most decks, uh, you know, can handle. So they might only get to a Rangru once or twice. Yeah, yep, we're just, we just got to keep this clock rolling. I think my opponent's just going to see what I do. Uh, I think that I need to, let's just, uh, let's start to do it. Yeah, let's, let's just go in and see at this point we need to, we need to put our Orangaroo down, right? And then I'm just going to see what happens when we start doing this, right? We're just going to uh, Acerola, the active, sure. Yeah, let's just get that guy out of there. I'm gonna put up the Orangaroo, and then I think that I actually don't really want my other Steelix down. I kinda like him being out. And then let's just start to resource management, and we're just gonna start shuffling some things back into the deck. So let's just do that. We're gonna throw back in probably a Cynthia, a Lusamine, and a... Uh, probably an enhanced hammer seems good. Yeah, we're just gonna just throw those things back into the deck. And we're just gonna stay up here and we're gonna keep resource management, you know, using that for a while. Eventually we'll get some Cynthia's that we play. And at this point, I think we can't lose, right? We just throw everything back into the deck and we go from there, right? Uh, then we just keep playing Cynthia and then we have the beautiful infinite loop going on. I suppose I could have like played, I have a Lusamine in this hand, could have played Lusamine to get like the Cynthia back into my hand here, but at this point it just doesn't really matter, I don't think, so we're just gonna continue using resource management here. And I mean, I actually like, I have to get to class, like I'm like looking at the clock, like I don't know what the longest game on PTCGO has ever been, or, you know, how many people sit here and duke this out? Will we run out of time eventually? Is like a valid question that I have. I only have 13 minutes left on my clock. Will I lose? Uh, if, do I lose if that like becomes a thing? I just don't know. So I think that's like a weird thing in like, uh, you know, PTCGO world. Like, do you lose when your clock runs out? My opponent's got more time on their clock than I've got on mine. And that's probably because, you know, I'm taking time talking, filming a video, doing all that. Ooh, no, do not flying flip, please. Uh, I cannot have you doing that. So I'm going to need to remove your energy, sir. That is bad. So we're going to need to get that right out of there. Where is there like a, where is my Lusamine? Do I have a Lusamine in here? Tell me I've got a, not a Lusamine, a, uh, I need a, uh, Whoa, where is the card? This is insane. Like this is Plumeria. That's the one I need. All right, let's get a Plumeria. And let's discard uh, probably Hoopa and uh, Whalmer seems fine. I'm going to discard those. And then I think, yeah, I can't Stevens Resolve or anything, so I just keep throwing more cards back into the deck. Let's just resource management again. And let's throw in uh, Enhanced Hammer and two Plumerias, those fun cards. I don't really know. Like, I think usually when you're playing a stall deck on PTCGO, your opponent probably scoops sooner than this. But they, my opponent just seems very intent on playing this game out. So 
that's fine. You guys get to see the real struggle that is playing a stall deck like this. And I think the biggest struggle <laughs> is uh, trying not to get bored and then also trying to see what's in your glitchy little hand down here. I don't think the game, like clearly the game was not designed to have this many, uh, to have this many things in your hand. So let's just Demon's Resolve, sure. I'm just gonna go get like, I don't know, I feel like I want those energies out of there. So let's just go get like Enhanced Hammer, some Enhanced Hammers, yeah, that seems cool. And then I think I've got an Ace Roller in my hand already. So I'm just gonna Steven's Resolve, get some Enhanced Hammers, go from there. Eventually we're gonna need to play Cynthia and then just draw our hand out again. Like I said, I do have class, so I can't actually take, like, I guess I have, like, I have a whole hour. This game can't take a whole hour, right? I actually have no idea. Like I said, I have no idea what happens when the timer runs out. So that will be, that'll be news to me as well. And uh, I don't know. I think we're all in for a treat whenever that happens. So I'm trying to play as quickly as I can at this point. There's only so much stuff I can do during my turn. I think so long as I just, like, slam pass, I should just be fine, right? I don't think that I can actually be in danger of losing this game since I do have the infinite loop. My opponent does not. But they do have uh, they do have Cynthia's though. So like they will be drawing their, you know, deck out over and over and over again. And I don't really have any way to escalate this. I just don't think that I do, right? I think Oh my gosh, they, they have like a lot of energy in this deck. This is very annoying. So let's just, uh, I would like to play the Enhanced Hammer, please. <laughs> that, is, that is like getting very annoying to find, honestly. So it's just resource management. I only got two more cards in the discard pile. Then we need to start playing Cynthia and then just passing, right? And then just getting our whole hand back out and then Lusamine for Cynthia again. And then we just continue passing. Like that's kind of, where we're going here. So I think, yeah, I just pass for a while until we get that up and rolling. I could ace a roll of the Oranguru just to protect it and make sure that like nothing scary happens to it, but I kind of like having it in the active position. I don't think that my opponent's deck is built to be able to do any sort of substantial amount of damage quickly. Oh, they do have an enhanced hammer though. <laughs> oh, oh, surprise, they got an enhanced hammer. That's actually totally fine because I have both my energies. So I can just, uh, I could just resource management back for the other energy and then pretty easily go get it back. So shouldn't be any sort of issue. I should just be completely fine. But it is interesting to know they do play an enhanced hammer. That's kind of spicy. And now they're going to have to Cynthia. I just, I don't know how do we escalate this game past this, this point. Let's tell you what. If you are here right now and you are listening, kudos to you. You are, you're, you're a real fan. So <laughs> if you're here trying to figure out with me what in the world happens, uh, you know, you guys rock. So. Let's see, we're going to Plumeria again, so I'm just going to discard uh, probably, yeah, I don't know, I don't need like this Lele or that Onyx. We're gonna discard those and get rid of that energy. At this point, what is like my opponent's energy situation? They've got four, four, and three unit energies. At most, they play one more unit energy. They are not going to be doing anything with that. So I think it's safe to, you know, resource management again at this point. I think I just attached that. And then we just, you go up, give it a good old resource management. Let's throw the energy back into the deck, the Plumeria and an Onyx. Sure. And now we could ace a roll of this thing and, you know, kind of keep it safe. But I don't really even think that there's any point. Now that I have the other energy in my deck, I'm just like completely safe. They're going to Tate and Liza. And you see their deck just getting huge there. That is, uh, that is hilarious. Now they're back to having... 38 cards in their deck and we are here just like drawing our decks out again this is this is insanity i don't know i don't know what to do with my life this this seems bad but it's fine got nine minutes left on the clock the time is actually going down pretty quickly 
I would say. But yeah, yeah, here we go. I just, I think that we eventually are going to have to Cynthia, but we don't have to Cynthia yet. Is there any benefit? I mean, it doesn't matter. I, it really doesn't matter. I'm just thinking almost anything I do, it doesn't matter. They're just going to make me win. They're going to make this the longest video that I've ever done, the longest single game that I've ever done, just because this deck is silly. So it's an awesome deck. I mean, shout out to Sander for creating a pretty dope deck, to be honest. But I just, uh, I could not in a million years stomach playing this thing. So let's see, where where's our Cynthia's? I want to find those because I feel like that's like one of my big holdups here. I think we just, let's just Tate and Liza. I don't want anything weird to happen. So we're just going to Tate and, no, we're just going to Tate and Liza. It's just Tate and Liza, and we're gonna shuffle our deck into our hand. Shuffle our deck into our hand. We're gonna shuffle our hand into our deck, and draw five cards. So, got a smaller deck, or I've got a bigger deck than my opponent. My opponent, you know, obviously has more cards that they've wasted because they can't get infinite cards out of the. And we're just gonna resource management. Sure, throw that back in. They can't get infinite cards at their disposal. So. I can't, let's see, this can't do anything, right? We could we could cold crush, that doesn't do anything. So, yep, we're just, we just out here right now. Tell you what, while we're doing this, I've got some pretty dope GX counters, and uh, the deal is that I'm trying to get rid of them. So, uh, I would like to give one away, and so we will, for everyone here, uh, we will, uh, I don't know, let's let's figure out a way to give one away. And then I'm trying to trying to sell the other ones. I actually need to pay to repair one of my cameras. I'm not going to be putting them on the Etsy store, though, because apparently that, uh, that GX there is actually like the Pokemon official GX and uh, is like copyrighted. So I can't really sell them. Apparently people get in trouble for that. So I'm not going to, I can't sell them like on a, through a store or whatever, but kind of on the low or whatever, but it's not really on the low, but I just, I'm probably going to end up, you know, getting rid of them just because I have 26 of them. I have 26 of them. So I want to give one away. I like to sell the other ones. Uh, if you are interested in one, you can go ahead and uh, DM me on Twitter and we'll work something out uh, at enjoyfriend, E-N-J-O-I friend. And we could do that. And, you know, it will just uh, just DM me on Twitter. We'll figure out, uh, you know, whatever shipping and all of that and, uh, you know, and, and, and price point for them. Now, they're super unique. They're super limited. They're made by a buddy of mine who works in a machine shop, actually. They're made of, like, pure aluminum. And this is the only run he said that we were going to do. I don't think that I'm going to be doing any more of them just because they cost, like, a lot to make. Uh, but he hooked me up with them. You know, he said, like, all right, you know, we didn't realize that the, you know, the image was copyrighted or whatever. So he just kind of, like, gave them to me. Uh, you know, uh, just kind of at cost. So that was like pretty sweet. And, uh, and was just like a huge, you know, huge uh, kind of bro move on my friend's part. So that was awesome. So now I just kind of have these things, right? Like 26 of them. And it's, uh, it's just weird trying to, you know, try a weird, weird thing to have. So uh, I'm stoked on them. They're awesome. I use one at, you know, every single event that I go to, I use this as my GX counter. And I think that's just like so sick. It's like, it's nice. It's weighty. It's like kind of heavy feels awesome uh, to use and especially when you use your GX move it's just like it's like thud, you know it's like it has this awesome kind of a effect to it uh, you know it feels like you're really using your GX move uh, just because it's this nice kind of like uh, it feels like a paperweight almost right so I'd like to give away one though so say what uh, somebody who comments in this video uh, I'll give away the GX counter to you so if you uh, if you if you comment in the video below, uh, I will select, use a random number generator and randomly select one of the commenters from the video to get uh, one of these GX counters. And, uh, you know, I'll contact you through DMs. I think on YouTube you could do it. So I'll contact you through DMs on YouTube or whatever and uh, or tell you on your comment or something like that to contact me on Twitter for the giveaway. So comment on the video tell me what you think about this crazy steelix deck and you could win one of these gx counters if you would like to purchase one you can go ahead and slide into my dms on twitter at enjoy friend e n j o y friend and we will work something out uh through uh you know uh, through twitter so 
go ahead and DM me if you want. And uh, yep, that's uh, that's how we will do that. Like I said, supplies are very limited. I only have 26 of them. That's it, and then they're gone. And that's just that. I've given most of them away to like most of my close friends. I've given some away to Patreon subs and all that. Uh, so they're they're super super you know limited, super cool. But anyways. That's enough rambling on the GX counters. My opponent's about to play another Cynthia. Dude, this is this is just too much. Uh, and I feel like I'm gonna make it through this whole video and there's just going to be something that I had missed. And people will say like, uh, duh, Andrew. There was like, you were supposed to do this play to you know expedite the game, right? And I'm just gonna be like, what? I could have done that? Uh, I can't screech. No, I don't think that there's anything I can do. This Articuno doesn't do anything. This Whalmer doesn't do it. Most definitely. To, shout out to my, uh, you know, for uh, what, to Sonder for playing the Whalmer split, uh, by the way, as well. I don't think that the Whalmer split actually matters, but uh, shout out for playing that Whalmer split because it's awesome. Right, just because it is dope. Uh, when we were playing Buzzwool Garbodor back last year at St. Louis, we played a 1 1 Trubbish split just because it didn't matter, and that was awesome as well. So, shout out to my opponent for being sweet. I think, uh, yeah, I was going to say, I think I could like start, I could play cards. Like, I could ace a roll of this Steelix and just lay it back down just because it would be fun, but I think I'd rather not. Um, I think I'd rather not. Yeah, so we're just waiting to Cynthia, and we're going to pass. Can you imagine being at, like, a regional or in a final and just, like, real life just doing this? I, I can't. I really can't. It doesn't feel like I'm playing Pokemon. It feels like I'm I'm running a radio talk show and, pa and pressing pass. It feels like that is uh, what I'm doing, but... Anyways, there's lots of exciting things coming kind of on, you know, going forward for Tricky Jim here. Uh, for many of you that probably already know, I am in Full Grip Games right now. So this is like new studio location for me at Full Grip Games. Also going to be working here starting in a few weeks. So that is awesome as well and just has a bunch of exciting new implications for the channel. Uh, most notably, we'll be able to start streaming tournaments and things that are happening in full grip games i'll also be uh kind of partner with them and supporting them as a shop because they support me as a content creator so we have this awesome kind of you know relationship also i'm going to be their employee so tricky jim is going to be uh you know promoting them going forward and uh because they are people that i really love and believe in and i just think that their shop is honestly one of if not the best shop that I've ever encountered. And I, I love them all as people. Many of my friends uh, work here and uh, you know I'm friends with the owner, Jameson, as well. And we get along really, really well. So you know quite simply, going forward by supporting Full Grip Games, when you guys support Full Grip Games by either buying cards from them in person at regionals and events and things like that when they're vending, or from buying from them online, you are supporting me and all my closest friends as far as just our livelihood goes. Uh, I should have resource management that, Cynthia, but it's cool. We'll get there next turn. Not really concerned here. So uh, it's this uh, pretty pretty sweet situation uh, going on. But, yeah, so you guys can expect to see more of a partnership between me and Full Grip Games going forward. It's not going to be full-blown, like, you know, sellout mode. So if you're worried about me selling out, don't worry about me selling out. This is uh, just kind of, uh, you know, think of it as, like, kind of a happy partnership right think of it like you know star city games for magic right that's kind of like the dream is we want to be uh kind of like the star city games of pokemon right i don't know if, if there's any like sort of you know uh i don't know if people got bad stuff against star city games i don't actually watch their stuff but i do understand that they're kind of this uh marriage between being a shop uh and a vendor and also being a content provider for the magic scene so that's kind of what we imagine right is that full grip will be able to support tricky gym and tricky gym will be able to support full grip and that we'll be able to grow in the community together and since literally it's like 
me and all my friends working at Full Grip and going to their tournaments, it just makes perfect sense for us to support each other and do that stuff going forward. So I really hope uh, that you guys are as excited as I am about this growth for the channel and just for me and my personal life as well. Uh, I'm gonna be taking a break from teaching. Many of you guys already know that just because uh, I really, uh, I really felt like I was burning myself at both ends here. It's just I was running out of energy. I felt unhealthy. Uh, teaching full time as well as going to graduate school and running the YouTube channel and playing a Pokemon trading card game on a competitive level was just like burning me completely out. I just couldn't bear to do it. Uh, anymore so you know the teaching job was cool love working there been there for four years now love the kids I uh, love what I was doing there but it just it was getting a little bit uh, too hectic so I had to take a step back from that and you know I may return to teaching one day I'm going to finish up my degree make sure that I get my master's degree under my belt but while I do that I would I'm also going to invest myself fully into Tricky Gym as a channel and also going to be investing myself fully into my job here at Full Grip Games and try to really just make this uh, the best card shop uh, that the Pokemon scene has to offer as well as make Tricky Gym the best channel uh, that the Pokemon scene has to offer. And that's kind of like the dream, right? Is that we want to be able to provide you guys with like the best content, want to be able to provide you guys with the best services and the best product, right? So that's kind of like our dream scenario. And you know, you guys, uh, you guys let me know what you guys think about that. Are you excited about it? I'm excited about it. It means that, you know, we're gonna have a lot more uh, kind of resources at our disposal, right? I mean, heck, I've got my studio in a brand new place that is not my bedroom. This is big, right? This is really, really big. There's a tournament room right over there where we'll be able to stream uh, tournaments to Tricky Gym. That is going to be amazing as well. Uh, just so much cool stuff on the horizon. You guys have made this happen just by supporting the channel and helping it grow, turning it into a real thing that I wanted to pursue with you know my time and my efforts and, and now my career, right? Uh, this has all been, you know, thanks to you guys. You guys have been the ones that made this happen. And I really just have to thank everybody who's contributed to the channel, you know, through Patreon, through Etsy, and just through views. Every time you click a video, you're helping me out with those views. Every comment, every like, all that really, really helps. And uh, I really appreciate it from the bottom of my heart. So there's that. We've got the GX counter giveaway. We've got GX counters for sale. If you want to DM me on Twitter, we've got uh, this stall deck, which is rotting my brain from the inside out. I just, I just, I think, I think we lose, right? If we run out, is the timer, do we lose? I would like to Google it, but that will waste the timer. I wish that I had somebody else here to ask. I wish Natalie was around. I feel like she knows the answer to these questions. I feel like also probably Sean Lydon probably knows the answer to these questions, right? Because uh, this is just like his jurisdiction. He plays the stall decks. I'm not super into stall decks. So I think I'm just going to sit here and I'm going to like try to click the done as fast as possible so that I waste like no more than like one second per action, right? because I'm super nervous about what happens when the timer runs out. Hopefully my opponent has something they have to go do like with their life and then they just, you know, they, they just quit because they couldn't afford to just sit here all day. But it looks like I'm losing like maybe two seconds a turn. So like that's not good. I don't want to lose. I lost three seconds on that last turn. So things are things are escalating more quickly here than I would like. If I just jam the click button, if I jam the click here, it just, it takes about three seconds and it makes the game lag. I don't know if you guys are noticing. Could just be because I have like a very large hand at this point, but I'm not sure. We need to find the Cynthia's. All right, I found the Cynthia's. And I think if I had been like hip to what I needed to do here from the beginning, I could have made this a little bit better, 
But, uh, you know, I just uh, I didn't know that it was going to require all this. I didn't know that it was going to come down and I was going to run out of time on the clock. Now, that might not even end up mattering. I just I don't know. I think it does, though. I think it kicks you off. I think you lose. I think you just lose if you run out of time on the clock. So that makes me very nervous. I'm going to need a jam of Cynthia here coming up. All right, let's uh, let's do it. All right, let's Cynthia. So we're going to shuffle. Yes, I understand. All right, let's go, 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 go. Uh, I'm doing it early just because I, I hate the idea of like running out of, you know, cards or something or running out of uh, or just like, you know, getting in the zone, clicking pass, 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 and then just lose because I pass. If I lose because I get timed out, you know what? That happens. That's fine. And it's, you know, a learning experience for me and maybe for you all. If you've never run the timer out, we will have learned the ways. Oh, my opponent's going to copycat. That's one creative way. How many cards do they have in the discard pile? They have two Cynthia, two Tate and Liza, and a copycat. So they probably have two more Cynthia. We're not going to get there, guys. It's just, you know, we're wasting three seconds a turn here. It's going to eventually end. And I guess if I had just been here, you know, silently the whole time, just pressing done as quickly as possible, not kind of, you know, messing around with what to Stevens for or anything like that, it would have uh, it would have taken less time, uh, I guess, and maybe I could have saved myself and eventually won this game. Uh, I'll tell you what, though, my opponent is going to be very excited when they when they win. They, that the fact that they were able to not lose in enough time before I eventually ran out. Maybe they knew that. Maybe they knew that they could get the dub just by running my clock out. But they have been much more responsible with their clock than I have been with mine. So. This is a learning experience for me. I think in a tournament setting, uh, we would have won. I think that this deck, uh, we would have won because I think that my you know, my opponent doesn't play a Rangaroo, so we just would have eventually been able to win. Um, I should, yeah, I was going to say I should be resource managed. No, I should not be resource managed. I'm fighting the clock now. I'm not fighting anything else, so... I think that's just uh, that's gonna be it. Uh, in 18 turns, I will be definitely out of cards. So even if they play no more shuffle draw, which I know that they do, they still just win either way. But like I said, I think this deck needs a Cartana GX just so that if it does go to time and no one has taken a prize, your opponent doesn't automatically win. I think you need to play it so that you can just go in and Tate and Liza into your Kartana and then use your GX attack in order to just take a prize and win after you've gone to time. After you put the Kartana GX, I mean the Kartana GX also removes a uh, also removes a special energy. So in a pinch, you can like fan club for it and it's an energy removal. I like that as well uh, with that slice off, right? So you can fan club for it or nest ball for it. I'm only got 13 set yeah so it's telling me i'm about to lose i'm about to lose no all right well anyways you guys already remember i'm going to be giving away one of these gx counters to somebody who comments in this video and then i am also going to be selling the remaining 25 to uh anyone who wants them can dm me on twitter uh obviously it's going to be just uh you know uh I think they're going to be probably like 25 shipped or something within the U.S. And then uh, we'll figure out if you live, uh, you know, if you live somewhere else. Uh, defeat. Oh, that is, uh, that's horrible. Oh, well. So, yikes. Major yikes. All right, that's the Steelix deck. We lost. But, you know, we had fun. And we would have won if it was a tournament. But we ran out of time. And that's the first time that I have literally ever done that. So, that was a horrible experience. I hope that I never have to play a stall deck again. But it was fun. The deck is good for sure. And uh, let me know your thoughts in the comments below for a chance to win one of these shiny, beautiful uh, GX counters. Going to show them off on the full screen there. These things are awesome. They're thick. They are cool. And uh, I, I personally love them. I think they are super dope. So we've got our 25 of them right here. Uh, message me on Twitter if you're interested in them. Thank you all so much for watching the video. Make sure to like the video, sub the channel, ring that bell. Let me know what do you guys think of the Steelix deck in the comments below. Make sure to check out the Etsy store and the Patreon stuff in the description below. Peace.